Hey, Redcon Raider here, and welcome back to the beta for Warhammer 40k Rogue Trader. As today, we continue marching our way through the tutorial and try to find out who's behind this attack on our future ship. Though those of you who watch the Alpha series probably have an inkling of who's behind all this. That said, uh, we should hopefully be finding some med kits and proper equipment soon, because otherwise we're going to really start struggling. We've already got our first old wound, and as the tutorial mentioned to us earlier, we'll start suffering stacking debuffs if we can't get that under control. The massive golden structure never stops moving for a moment. Light bounces off the orbits and figures representing celestial bodies. Oh, it's a giant astrolabe. Cool. I do like that kind of uh, gothic retro sci-fi flair. Oh, here we go. There's a breakthrough attempt. Crew, to arms! Recapture the bridge! Attack! Oh. Well, that, um... I'm thinking we should maybe not go that way. Yeah, this, uh, this seems like a better direction. Okay, so that bridge is raised. A new challenge for me? Hey, Mord. Oh, and, uh... Yep, Voightveer. Conrad Voightveer lets out a sigh of relief upon seeing you. Thank Providence you're alive and well. Always on time, eh, Conrad? The moment we finish chasing the riffraff around the deck, you show up. Always just after the fighting's done. You can set your chrono by it. Conrad pointedly looks away from the arch militant to you. Mort, pull yourself together. The arch militant looks back at you. What, did the Lord Captain send you to chivy us along? We're all done here. I'll report right away. Mort pulls his box from his belt and hurriedly reports on the situation. Hey, guys. Oh, it's uh, Theodora and Abelard. Master of Whispers, what is happening on my ship? The Voxnet is silent. The Voxmaster is not responding. Armed assailants have stormed the officer's deck and my arch-militant just destroyed several more heretics on the way here. Is this a severe case of warp madness? Have some of my crew lost their minds and forgotten who they are and whom they serve? Report! I have not yet received word from the Engineerium regarding any Gellerfield failures, but communications were already unstable half an hour ago, and now they've ceased altogether. Whatever the cause may be, the consequences are spreading fast. I'm receiving scattered reports from the middle decks, and the only Vox gas from the lower bays are one-way heretical gibberish. Voidvir pauses. That the madmen have already reached the officer's deck suggests that this outrage was planned in advance. Perhaps this is an organized mutiny. A mutiny? Who in their right mind would attempt a mutiny in mid-warp? Lunatics. Fools. Heretics. This ship houses thousands upon thousands of people. Pernicious thoughts and warp-induced illusions could have tainted any one of them. It is a difficult notion to accept, but such risks are inescapable. Excuse me, Rain. Could you please get your face out of my microphone? First, we have to confirm that the bridge and the navigator's sanctum are secure and I have the means to do both things at once. Her expression changes as her eyes flash ominously. Theodora looks at Voightbeer. 
Edelthred, where is he? I must know if he is unharmed. A psyker aboard a ship that is potentially being assailed by the warp could pose a greater threat to himself and others than a whole army of madmen with improvised weapons. Oh, Edelthred's a psyker. I did not get that impression from our first meeting. That does feel very relevant. Lady Theodora's got some peculiar interests. I tried to locate him, but the last thing known about his movements is that he arrived on Transitional Deck 18. Blast it! Master of Whispers, find Edelthred immediately! Seneschal, locate Talas and the Sister of Battle. Both are to remain at my side. Arch Militant, with me. I must go to my study, and it appears that we might encounter heretics along the way. Retcon. Theodora glances at you thoughtfully. If I may, Lord Captain. Voitvir's voice is soft and cautious. Transitional Deck 18 is at the heart of the disturbance. And if our goal is to bring Edelthread back, I could use some support. After all, I'm not as adept at directly confronting enemies of the house as the esteemed Arch Militant. And taking into consideration Edelthread's Psyker powers. Hmm. And it's settled. Retcon. Find Edelthread and return here. In any state. This elevator, she points at the massive doors, leads to restricted compartments such as my personal chambers and the bridge. Do not let me down. I require you both. Do you understand? In any state? Would you care to clarify that for me, Lord Captain? Conrad coughs. We're in the warp. Considering the attack, there could be disruptions in the Geller field, and the infiltration of malevolent forces onto the decks. Psychers might react to this in the most unpredictable ways. Enough! You, Master of Whispers, must not allow my heir to turn into a mindless mutant and perish from Enforcer's fire. Do anything but bring me back Edelthread. Uh, yes, of course, of course, Lord Captain. I shall do everything in my power. Theodora hisses in fury. Not everything in your power. You will do as I say. I'll have your heads if you fail. Is that clear? Then move out. Mort, come. She seems nice. But yeah, yeah, she definitely seems to have a much more vested interest in recovering the psychic air as opposed to keeping me alive. Voitvir gives you a nod. Are you ready to head to 18? It's a long walk, and you don't even have proper gear. Oh, nice. Are we getting to the equipment tutorial? That would be fantastic. I shall make do. Lead the way, Master of Whispers. Of course you will. He rummages in his pocket for something. Lady Theodora would never have someone she couldn't rely on as one of her heirs. But that is no longer relevant. I'm sorry, I, I didn't quite catch that. With a pop and a sharp crackle, something hits you in the abdomen. And you are consumed by unbearable, gut-wrenching pain. And there it is. I promised you a special destiny, Retcon. It's time to fulfill it. Damn you, Void Fear! Curse your sudden but inevitable betrayal! I will say though, that was uh that was much more abrupt than I thought it would be. And again, I suppose this setup does have a lot in common with their Pathfinder games. In both cases, you barely had time to really get your bearings before all hell broke loose. The attack on Jamandi Aldori's manor, the um the demonic siege on Canabras. Alicant does like to get right into the action. 
Ow. Boo! Objective failed. I refuse to accept that on my permanent record. I had zero agency on that. Careful, careful. Be gentle with our guest. He has an important mission to complete during our visit to the Warren Chamber. And for that, I need him breathing. Voightbeer looks down at you. You're back with us, I say. Delightful. Voightbeer, you two-faced scum! You're the one behind this mayhem! How perceptive of you, Retcon. I'll help you with the next insight. I need you here for your blood. You have the option to share it voluntarily, or I'll squeeze it out of you myself. I inappropriate? We're in the anteroom of the Warrant Chamber, this void ship's most hallowed vault. There, beyond those gates, lies the relic that gives Theodora all of her power. The sacred Warrant of Trade. Only one obstacle remains on my path to obtaining it. The gates of the chamber are guarded by the Sentinel, an ancient device that will only open the door to a true heir of the dynasty. I expected to do this part myself, but... Never mind. You will offer your blood to the Sentinel. What's wrong, Master of Whispers? Your blood too thin for the Sentinel? Or perhaps you've grown so rotten it's curdled in your veins? On the contrary, the Warp's blessing has raised me too much above your kind, Von Valancius. The Sentinel refused to submit to me. But you can help. After all, isn't that what family is for? Oh, wow. Uh, gotta go with that one. What sorry, pathetic excuse do you even have for your apostasy, you sordid, wretched grok seed? Something, either your tone or the venomous words, throws Conrad off for a moment, as hateful fury blazes from beneath the mask of a cold professional. Wretched? What do you know about wretchedness, Theodora's cur? Are you hoping to buy a grain of her indulgence with your blind loyalty? Oh, I know this delusion. But thank the gods, it no longer adds power over me. Humanity can rot. I no longer serve mortal kind. Hoytbeer hesitates for a second, and then produces a strange weapon. A blade without a handle that shimmers blue in the light. Once my work is done, I'll make that pompous wench Von Valancius watch as I erase the entire Dynasty Chronicle and I commit the fate of the bloodline into the hands of the Warp Gods. And you, Redcon, will be one of the instruments by which I will accomplish this righteous act. The blade flashes in the dim light, and drops of blood appear on your palm. For a brief moment, you feel nauseous, your head is spinning, and then quiet whispers begin to flood your mind. More and more sourceless voices echo each other, drowning out your own thoughts, replacing them with a singular urge. Go to the gate. Go to the gate. Go to the gate. Get out! I am not your puppet! The voices in your head giggle and mock your desperate outcry. You feel this intruding influence forcing you onto your feet and making you take a step toward the gate looming in the center of the chamber. Well, fine, maybe I will go to the gate, but not because you told me to. In the gateway arch, you see a cogitator with a human likeness built into the front panel. As you approach, the torso twitches slightly. This is a servitor, an obedient automaton created from a lobotomized human being. The sentinel turns its head to you, one of its eye sockets sliding up with two ember-like irises. Gross. You carefully inspect the design of the gate cogitator. 
What immediately catches your eye is the strange alloy that was used as material for the machine's components, some of which are unfamiliar to you. You suspect that you're looking at a technological relic known as Archaeotech. The servitor on the gate begins to move. With a screeching and groaning of metal, it leans forward, closer to you. Its lower jaw opens with a drawn-out shriek, much wider than the jaw of a living human could. The servitor's mouth is filled with sharp metallic fangs that glint in the dim light. The vid screen to the right of you lights up, showing strings of mysterious symbols on a green background. A whisper runs through your consciousness, insisting, demanding sacrifice. The voices that filled your head after Voitbeer wounded you with his blade did not go away. On the contrary, their source coiled itself into a tight knot somewhere in the depths of your mind. The servitor looks noticeably different from the ones you're used to. Copper thread stitches its skin. The joints are replaced by metal hinges. It seems that the creators of the Sentinel did everything so that the result of their work would serve much longer than an ordinary working automaton. Did you forget something, Retcon? I suggest you hurry. You look around in hopes of finding at least something that could work as a weapon. Your search is in vain. The chamber anteroom is completely empty and in perfect working condition. Nary a broken panel or a protruding piece of rebar in sight. Well, I tried. Uh, looks like we have literally no choice, so I guess we might as well give him a hand. The sentinel's jaws clamp around your hand, puncturing your skin and sinking into your flesh. A few dark drops fall into the servitor's throat. And immediately, you hear the humming as the servo motors start up and pumps stir into motion. The vid screen of the cogitator flickers. Several long minutes pass. The sentinel's jaws remain closed and you are beginning to feel sick. Perhaps if you were to lean against the gate, you could catch your breath. Maybe even close your eyes and pretend none of this ever ha- High levels of caustic humors. The subject is in a state of heightened stress. Do you require assistance? You do not understand where this quiet voice is coming from, crackling like static. Is it the Sentinel? The Cogitator? Is it a figment of your weary mind? Whichever it is, you can clearly hear every word. Yes, yes, I do require assistance. Pain shoots through your head and subsides just as quickly. It would seem the entity coiled in your consciousness does not have the ability to do you any real harm. Request accepted. Initiating defense protocol. Oh. Well, there's still another way. That is not the way I imagine that playing out, but here we are. The enormous gates match the importance of the thing they protect. The massive doors are made of heavy metal and look impregnable. I will say that is slightly larger than I thought it would be. How was uh, Conrad going to steal this? Let it be known that by my will and by the true words of this document, to be the paragon of humanity, unbroken by adversity, to triumph over nightmares untold, to hold boldly the reins of fate, to walk steadily the road of thorns, through pain, to greatness, the servo skull's creaking gradually turns into comprehensible words. Escort the child of the house to safety. 
I'm sorry, what madness is happening here? Who are you? Who addresses me? Temporary obnubulation following acute stress. Mobile unit of the Warren Sentinel standing by. Okay, and I take it you're this Warrant Sentinel? Mobile unit of the Warrant Sentinel designed as a personal escort of the child of the house and a means of communicating with the rogue trader's subjects. Mobile unit standing by. Well, I need guns. Lots of guns. Distance from the current location to the nearest arsenal. Initiating situational calculations. The servo skull goes silent, its relays clicking. Second after second passes, and you realize that the servo skull will not answer you. All right, let's try this. I need to contact someone, preferably Theodora. Boxcast frequencies disrupted. Initiating setup. Establishing connection. In place of the mechanical screeching, the Servo Skull's Vox projects the voice of Theodora von Valancius. Distorted and ridden with static, yet still recognizable beyond a doubt. Voxmaster, restore communication with the Navigator's Sanctum. I am trying to contact the bridge. If anyone can hear me on this frequency, regroup all available forces and head to the upper decks at once. I repeat, regroup all available forces and head... Communication protocols breached. Signal latency assessment unavailable. Unable to establish two-way connection. Just lead me away from here. Preferably somewhere safe. Middle and upper decks, assuming the probability of safe placement in areas of concentration of armed units. Calculating. The servo skull twitches and makes a few clicks. To prevent unauthorized units from breaching the warrant chamber, preemptive sealing must be initiated. The mobile unit will start executing the received order immediately after the safety of the warrant is secured. Right. Wouldn't want someone wandering off with this thing in their pocket. That's just the proclamation from the Emperor that grants rogue traders their power. Timing on the floating text could use some work, but otherwise very, uh, very dramatic. I will say, I did not expect the warrant to look like that. Though I suppose given the, uh, the grand astrolabe we passed not too long ago, it certainly is in keeping with the Warhammer 40k aesthetic. What better way to show people that something is important than by literally making it the size of a room. Seneschal Abelard Wersurian has lost some of his former polish. His forehead is sweating, and one of the sleeves of his coat is torn and soaked through with blood. Nonetheless, despite his heavy breathing, he stands firm, and his gaze is demanding, albeit somewhat surprised. Master Retcon, what... Whatever are you doing in the Warren Chamber? How did you... He surveys the carnage around him. His brow furrows, and he places a hand on his weapon. Throne preserve me. What is the meaning of this? How did you find me? Are you with that traitor, Voitveer? Abelard stares at you as if a toad just jumped out of your mouth. Master Retcon, with all due respect... What nonsense are you saying? Conrad? A traitor? Yes. Had you arrived here but a moment ago, you would have heard him openly admitting as much. He's behind this mutiny. Groxseed. Then it is small wonder that the heretics are so well organized. I thought his order to seal all passages between decks was his attempt to stop the attackers from spreading to other levels. But now I see the real reason. It was to stop the enforcers from intervening. At least you are alive and now safe, Master Retcon. Alas, I doubt we can afford to look for a compartment to sit out this disaster. Abelard examines you critically. You are in a bad way, Retcon. I can treat your wounds. I have a Medicaid kit with me. And for the love of the throne, now is not a good time to be walking around the decks without means of self-defense. Here. He hands you a weapon.
Let's get this stuff equipped. Get those lingering wounds dealt with. Yeah, so uh, med kits are how we get rid of old wounds. Makes sense. The infinite healing back in the alpha was obviously pretty broken. I don't have time for this. Oh, uh, Rhett, are you not proficient with medikits? Because I'll pass. That feels like a. Uh, hmm. Well, we can equip this at least. And that's actually a pretty nice fit for our style. I mean, don't get me wrong, it's no splinter cannon, but it'll it'll do in a pinch. And I could really take or leave the flak chest plate. We're running an agility build, so dodge is slightly more important than armor, but we'll uh, we'll give it a shot. There we go. Okay, Abelard is proficient with medikits. So that's how we do it. Abelard nods in satisfaction. That is a noticeable improvement, Redcon. Now you are prepared for the trials ahead. The lower decks are teeming with heretics, instigating the rabble to revolt. But that is the least of our problems. The ship's enforcers are rounding up the scoundrels and suppressing the resistance. The situation on the middle decks is much worse, although strike teams have already been dispatched there as well. All communication with the bridge and the engineering bay was lost. So, apart from some scattered vox casts, we have no information to go on. But that is not the worst of it all. He pauses when the light flickers yet again. All these jolts and shaking are most alarming. These are signs that the Navigator and the Master Helmsman are having difficulty translating the ship out of the warp and into real space. In the worst case, they have already lost control of the process and we all have precious few moments left to live. In the best case, if we manage to reach the Navigator's sanctum and get a handle on the situation, some aboard this vessel may yet survive. What do you think has gone wrong with the warp translation? That's something I'm clearly very knowledgeable about. I am no helmsman or God Emperor Preserve Me, Navigator. However, I have spent my entire life aboard void ships equipped with warp drives. And I know that portents such as these do not bode well. It could be that the Geller field has faltered. Perhaps the Navigator was struck down by warp corruption and is fighting for the last shreds of his humanity as we speak. If we get thrown off course, we will be forever lost in the warp. Naturally, we will not have long to live in that scenario. But even so, I do not intend to resign myself to such an outcome just yet. Wait. How did you know where to find me? Abelard tilts his head and looks at you with worry. You sent me a Vox message. Specifically, a Vox cast on the officer's frequency which I had the good fortune to receive. Do you mean to say you did no such thing? Interesting. Perhaps the Warrant Sentinel sent that message on my behalf. It appeared when I opened the chamber. Warrant Sentinel? He looks at the servo skull floating next to you. The Lord Captain barely ever ventures down to the chamber, and I was at her side only once or twice when she did, and I did not see anything of the sort. The Warrant Chamber is an ancient and rather sacred mechanism that the ship's tech priests treat with utmost reverence. I assume that whatever it is that you did, you must have activated certain processes and caused the Sentinel to awaken. But then, why did none of it happen when Lady Theodora did the same? He frowns. That is an excellent question, Abelard. Perhaps Lady Theodora isn't a Von Valancius, or perhaps like Voidbeer, her blood became too tainted to pass the, the blood test. Or maybe it's part of the... Uh, 
part of the security system that kicked in once it detected we were in peril. I guess that's a more innocuous explanation. During warp transit, the Sanctum is closed to all who are not involved in the course charting process. And for good reason. For the navigator to open their third eye and perceive the way, the Sanctum has to be bathed in the energies of the Immaterium. Only a navigator can withstand such an ordeal. For the rest of us, any contact with a warp is fraught with perils, such as loss of sanity, spontaneous mutations, and death. Abelard does not bat an eye as he lists all the horrors that you are about to face. I'm sorry, Abelard. Do we have a course of action that does not involve facing certain madness, mutation, and or death? Abelard sighs before raising his voice slightly. I concur that under ordinary circumstances, interrupting the navigator's solitude would be equivalent to suicide. Right now, however, our sacrifice could prevent the demise of a rogue trader, a void ship of the Imperium, and all her crew, armaments, and equipment. The choice is obvious. And what of Lady Theodora? Did you not hear her box cast? Lady Theodora's? Uh, which one? The last one I received was about the Navigator's Sanctum, and that was... a good while ago. In any case, let us hope that the Lord Captain is well and safely in charge of the ship's defense. In the meantime, we must do all we can to prevent the ship from veering off course. Very well then, the navigation chamber it is. Care to lead the way, Abelard? Absolutely, Ratcon. Let us proceed. A wave of static suddenly erupts from the servo scalp and you can make out Theodora's words through the noise. To arms, loyal sons and daughters of the God Emperor! Fight the heresy and corruption that threatens to consume our home! And with all your might, destroy those who have dared! The Seneschal's eyes light up, and he smiles with grim determination. The Lord Captain is calling her crew to battle, which means the Vox Networks are set up for broadcast transmission, not message exchange. Splendid! While the rogue trader inspires proper resolve to fight in her subjects, you and I shall prove that her trust in us is well deserved. Onward! The Emperor is with us! Ah! Hey, and we finally get a fight. Oh, and we have pre fight positioning. That's new. Not that we really have much in the way of terrain to work with, but let's try we can at least park Abelard up front and Rhett in back. Oh, nice. By sheer coincidence, I also parked Abelard one space outside of their movement range. That was not intentional, but I will absolutely take it. The two guys in back are up next, but that's too far for Abelard to reach, even with charge. So I guess we'll just start working our way around clockwise. Tried and tested tactics are the best ones. Victory is in one out and charge. I took care of this one. Very nice. Praise for impact. We can only do that once per fight, but this would be the time to do it. Nice, nice. And double nice. Alright, Rhett. Let's get you in there, buddy. Bursting onto the scene.
You don't hold a candle to retcon trader. And keep Abelard up front. Oh, right, except I don't have careful shot anymore. That was alpha stuff. Well, crud. Nice. Abelard, buddy. My place is at the fall. Indeed. Indeed. Achieved. And wounded again. Fantastic. Actually, that might be left over from before. We had two wounds. We got one from the Toothy Servitor. So maybe the Medikit only heals one at a time. Oh, and our very first level up. The first of many, my friends. Ooh, and we can loot bodies now. And right off the bat, let's get a second weapon set set up. Good old Laz pistol sword combo for those occasions where we have to mix it up in melee. Which really is just until we, uh, until we pick up Dash. Dash is a fantastic move for getting out of melee. So you can continue shooting people. Quick save before we mess with the level ups. Let's have a look. Marksman? I thought I was a soldier. Interesting. Also, that is... Oh, wow. Okay, okay. So I think they just changed the presentation, but not the actual meat of the system. As we gain levels, the bar fills clockwise, giving us access to additional nodes, but... Yeah, okay, see, yeah, here we have access to an ability and a skill advance. But do we have to choose one, or do we get both? Unlike the Alpha, there do seem to be two choices or two advances per level up, with a few rare exceptions. Oh, but we have new abilities. I mean, I'll be frank, we're almost certainly going for controlled shot first, but I would like to at least study these other abilities before I make that decision. Skill advancement seems straightforward. Yeah, and then like likewise, um, Abelard also has new new options I should really familiarize myself with before I rush into anything. All right, folks, I'll, uh, I'll tell you what, rather than sitting here and watching me agonize over what to choose for the next five minutes, let's hit the pause button for now. I will familiarize myself with this stuff off screen, and we will pick up here next time. See you then. Oh, and uh, special thanks to the Raiders, the fine folks who help make these videos possible. 
including but not limited to Revenant, Eloise, Dragon Matrix 7, Dracoth, Theory V23, Egon Alter, Emil, Excelsior, Goatlead, James Treme, Kazorm, Mark Jims, and Nathan Welch Jr., Overlord Ferrum, Random Passerby, Robbie B., Rowan Church, Thomas Piedkowski, Trip Hop and Skip, and Valenrug. Thanks for your support, guys. That said, if you'd also like to help support the channel, then feel free to push the buttons that do the things. Trust me, it does make a difference. Or you could even check out the PayPal, the Patreon, the Nexus GG, or the YouTube memberships. Links are in the description. I don't have time for this.